Greetings. Um, today I'm going to talk about a film that is uh, quite underrated. Uh, it's 30 years old this year, and it stars my favorite actor of all time, Gary Oldman. That movie is Immortal Beloved. Um, this film is about, you know, Beethoven, uh, uh, von Beethoven, and, um, you know, around, revolving around uh, this letter that he left that is mysterious, that people don't know who it's addressed to, because, you know, it's just as a mortal beloved. Um, and here I have the cast. I mean, there's cast here, but some of the names here, but uh, for who they play, um, has Joran, Jor, Joran, Crabby playing uh, uh, Anton Sch Schindler, who is, is essentially a, a Beethoven's secretary for a time, and um, also a lawyer. Um, though in the film, you know, it's like he, he was a very good friend and confidant to Beethoven, where in reality, not so much. Um, uh, Isabella Rossellini. Uh, played uh, Anne Marie Herdoy. Uh, no doubt pronounced that incorrectly. Uh, that happens often <laughs> with me. Joanna Terstege as uh, Joanna Ress, who was uh, Beethoven's sister in law, whom he did not, uh, was not fond of, and he was able to get custody of his. Uh, Nephew, um, Carl Van Beethoven, played by Marco Hofschneider. Um, uh, Valeria Gilone uh, plays uh, Giulietta uh, uh, Guccigardi. Uh, and, um, Yeah, this film is a, it's it's very good. Um, uh, again, you know, the gist is like you know, we, you know, they're trying to find out who is uh, the immortal beloved, and as a result, you can see a lot of uh, of Beethoven's life, um, some of the women that he was uh, infatuated with. Um, Played by Isabella Rosalini and Valera Giolano. Giolano. And uh, in particular. Um, and it, yeah, uh, I don't want to give away what the ending of this film says. Uh, who is the immortal beloved? Because even people who research Beethoven and everything, it's not a theory that has really been. Uh, presented, uh, really. Um, um, this was, film was written and directed by Bernard Rose, who uh, directed Candyman two years prior to this. Or at least that came out beforehand. And um, yeah, this film uh, came out in 1994. Um, And uh, had a lot of uh, rave reviews. Um, uh, or, well, it was mixed. Um, a lot of reviews, at least from what I can see today, is very, are very, very uh, positive. You know, back then, you know, 94, it, uh, it was very mixed. Um, and box office wise, it was a modest success, but this is the kind of film that is uh, just really well done. The acting is incredible, especially by Gary Oldman. I mean, everybody, all the actresses and actors in this film do a great job, but he is truly ama amazing. Um, uh,
this is a this is a performance that should have gotten Oldman an Academy Award nomination. Um, and honestly, as I, I watch this more and more over the years, um, I've actually kind of concluded that I have actually actually I have concluded that kind of, but uh, that this is my favorite film or not my favorite my second favorite film of 1994. The Shawshank Redemption is my favorite film of 1994. And my mouth is trying to speak uh, faster than my brain. Um, but yeah, that, uh, I, I really love this movie. Um, yeah, a lot of people these days, you know, seem to enjoy this quite a bit. You know, the acting is fantastic. Uh, the ending, whether or not who his immortal beloved is, because um, it wasn't Gelano or Rosalini, it seems, um, Somebody else could be somebody else I did not mention. Um, uh, but it's 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 a it's a film that is absolutely worth watching. Um, it's not talked about much. Um, I remember getting this. Um, I believe it was I was fourteen or fifteen. I, this came out in two thousand. This Blu-ray came out in 2007. I know I, I know I didn't get it then, but it was like a few years later. And um, well, I got it because well, it has Gary Oldman. I like Gary Oldman, obviously. I thought this just seemed like an interesting movie. This was around the time I was really getting into a bunch of more films that was beyond sort of like a horror and action oriented, or at least have a lot of action in it, you know. Star Wars, you know, sci-fi and fantasy uh, elements in that film, in those films, and, um, you know, really into horror at that, at this time, and I still am, but I was really getting into that in my teenage years, and this is just one that, you know, I've always admired Gary Oldman's work, and I thought, he's playing Beethoven, that'd be interesting to see. Um, and I remember this wasn't, uh, super expensive either. This was, I do remember I got this at Barnes and Noble and I've said before, you know, Barnes and Noble can be fairly expensive because, you know, obviously they want to make a profit off of whatever they are selling. So sometimes they will, um, up the prices a bit here and there. And I especially see that with Criterion films, uh, or films in the Criterion Collection, I should say. But yeah, this was not that bad of a price. Um, I don't recall exactly how much it was, but it wasn't super expensive. Probably about between 10 and 15 bucks or so. And again, this doesn't have a super... This isn't loaded with a lot of extra, fe uh, extra features as direct... Uh, to commentary by the director, the original feature it, and... Uh, Beloved, beloved Beethoven. Uh, um, yeah, it's about obviously a documentary. So, yeah, more to beloved, beloved, beloved. It's always great to not be able to always speak properly. Um, but I just got done watching this again and. I just love this movie. It's it's, a, it's an amazing film, you know. It looks amazing. The music, obviously, you know, Beethoven. Um, but you see quite a bit of, uh, uh, you know, his life, and and for the most part, overall, from chronicling his. From, it's not always in order, but from being a kid and his father wanting him to be like. Mozart, but you know, not being Mozart or the next Mozart, and then he was beaten, and it's like that's seen as a way as to why he became deaf, and then how he slowly kept losing his hearing over the years, and how he just was, um, 
an excellent uh, composer anyway. He could play the piano incredibly well. Um, and he loved his nephew Carl, but also he, you know, wanted quite a bit from him. You know, he wanted him to be a great musician. Carl wants to be a soldier. And, um, you know, he tries to kill himself because of how his uncle is to him. You know, even though, like, you know, like Beethoven loves his nephew at the same time, he's very, you know, no doubt, obviously, his lack of hearing and basically being deaf, <laughs> essentially being deaf, he, you know, can't hear or anything, isn't able to communicate as well as he would love. You know, he is very demanding and he wants so much from uh, uh, him and everybody else, and then it's just not working well or it's not just happening how he wants so he just gets frustrated and angry uh, you know it, he doesn't kill him he doesn't successfully kill himself but you know it's it's just still it's like either he was just abused in various ways by like like, like psych psychologically and wants so much from him and he's like I can't really fulfill what what he wants and so he's just you know it, it's and then afterwards he doesn't want to see his uncle ever again and uh, it's it's a very good film. It's, it's it's sad at various points, but you know, yeah, it's this is one of those films that is uh, it does a good job of uh, uh, attempting to try to be as faithful to what actually happened. Of course, you know, it's a film, so there are going to be certain things where uh, you know things are going to be fudged or messed with a bit in terms of the facts in order to uh, maintain uh, an, you know, an intrigue, you know, and especially when it comes to this mystery woman that he wrote to we don't know who that was um and so because of that we're, you know it's just going to be speculation the film does give an answer but again whether or not that answer has any true validity is unknown but who knows it, it could be could, quite true it could be completely false um Yeah, the music is Beethoven's music uh, throughout the film, and uh, very well done. And you get to your ode to joy at the end of the film at a concert, and you know uh, he looks fairly old, and like like one eye seems to be like going blind in one eye, so. You know, as as he got older, uh, things weren't going too hot for him. Uh, but while Beethoven's personal life might have been uh, quite messy, to say the least, um, he was an amazing composer. And um, he definitely had his demons and he had his ups and downs as anybody and some cases, you know, he might have brought that, some of those downs, uh, no doubt definitely brought them onto himself, but he made some great music. So, uh, that's good for everybody, uh, and in the world of, you know, today in today's world. And also even back then, he was very gifted. He, and the, uh, the story is truly amazing. 
This is one of Gary Oldman's best performances. And I think if you like Gary Oldman, and if you haven't seen this film, you should at least give it a watch. It's only uh, 121 minutes. So last week, you know, I talked about Amadeus, which was, you know, like three hours. You know, this is two hours. So there you go. I got an hour off for this one. So, you know, this is one of those films that I would say is a masterpiece masterpiece from 1994 one that you know at the time you know certain critics really praised it like roger ebert gave, uh, gave it praise um said uh seeing how uh, <clears throat> mortal beloved is, has clearly been made of, by people who feel uh, beethoven directly into their hearts sir oldman that seems first an unlikely choice they always see that he is right. You know, basically the consensus is Oldman is fantastic. You know, and in a publication of MSN movies, wrote how he was overworked for a well-deserved Oscar nomination, and I agree with that. He again, he, he, he at least should have been nominated for an Academy Award. Um, Tom Hanks won for Forrest Gump. Um, and he wasn't bad in Forrest Gump, though. I've always maintained that Morgan Freeman should have won for Shawshank Redemption. And I think even if Gary Oldman was nominated that, uh, that year, I still think he, <clears throat> Freeman would have been just a little better. Um, obviously I've said how at times it would be cool if some, uh, people could tie. And even last week, even though I asserted that Tom Hulse should have won the Oscar. I do think, you know, maybe it would have been cool if both he and F. Murray Abraham won from Amadeus, both for the same film. But, you know, if you can only choose one, I'd go with Tom Hulse. And if Gary Oldman and, you know, Morgan Freeman were up against each other, and, you know, again, ties don't really happen much. So I would, I personally would just go with uh, Freeman, you know, with Oldman's inclusion, but I think Oldman would be a very strong second place for me. Um, but yeah, this is just an amazing film. The performances are excellent. Um, again, you know, the ending of who the immortal uh, beloved is, we don't know. Um, but for the film itself, uh, I think it's a fairly satisfying conclusion, at least. Um, And that is my thoughts. Um, what do you think, you know, if you've seen this? Um, do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Is it somewhere in between? Like, do you like the performances, but think the movie might not be all that great, perhaps in terms of the storytelling or whatnot? Um, well, I'll also say, like, this is also a region-free Blu-ray, so that's cool. I could go somewhere around the world with this be able to watch it anywhere i think that's the same thing with my leon the professional and yes it is they're both from columbia so this came out uh in uh 2009 so for the film's 15th anniversary this came out and this came out for the this film's 13th anniversary yeah so I've already covered the two big films of Gary Oldman from 1994. I don't believe he has any others of major note that came out 30 years ago. His filmography, let's see. Yeah, nope, this is it. This is, these are the two films. This came out first, and then this. Hey, I caught it and they didn't fall on the ground, which usually happens when I have multiple Blu-rays or DVDs, whatever reason. Anyway, great film and great films. Uh, Gary Oldman had an excellent year in 1994, so should have gotten nominated for Oscars for both of these films. 
he didn't. It's unfortunate, but hey, he became an Oscar nominee and now a winner, so it's nice when those deserving of uh, accolades finally get them. Sometimes too late, sometimes just right. But also, I think for Oldman, in my opinion, he won correctly, but also he should have gotten nominated for multiple other films, such as these two. <sighs> That's all I have to say. Um, again, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I hope you are all having a great day. Hope you're all, you all will have a great weekend. You all have a great week. And I will see you all next time. Take care.